Recently, there's been a huge increase in the amount of affordable cinema cameras on the market. You have Blackmagic, Kinefinity, even Red are coming out with the Komodo. So if you want a true cinema camera for around five grand or so, there are lots of very good options now. However, in the world of lenses, we've seen quite a few affordable cinema primes hit the market, but not a huge amount of zooms. The most popular ones over the last few years would probably be the Sigma 18 to 35 mm and the 50 to 100, or the Fujinon MK lenses, with the Fuji MK lenses in particular being very appealing to a lot of customers. But they're E-mount only though, and by far the most common bit of feedback we get on them from customers was that they would love a set of lenses with similar features at a good price point, but for EF and PL mounts, so that they can use them with pretty much any camera out there. And that is why we are so excited about these, the new Pictor Zooms from DZO Film. And these are a set of two lenses at a price point that I've just never seen before for cinema zooms. For up-to-date pricing, of course, head over to proview.co.uk, but as of the time of recording this video, each lens is well under £2,000 XFAT, and you can get the set for just over £3,500. And at this price point, these are absolutely lenses which make sense financially for users of today's affordable cinema cameras. And because they're interchangeable between PL and EF mount, there'll be an investment that moves with you as your camera changes, as you can adapt EF or PL lenses to pretty much any other mount out there. So let's go over the lenses in more detail. The first one is a 20 to 55 mm, and the second is a 50 to 125 mm. They're both T2.8, and they both cover a super 35 mm sensor. Well, actually they cover a little wider than that, so you should be fine if you have a camera like the Red Komodo or the Red Gemini, which actually has a slightly larger than traditional Super 35 mm sensor. They're both roughly the same size, with the focus, iris, and zoom gears in all the same places, so it'll be easy to change lens when working with follow focuses and map boxes. And they're reasonably small and lightweight, not as light as the Fujinon MKs, those are incredibly light because they're designed for E-mount, but the wider lens weighs one and a half kilos and the longer lens is 1.7. And that is not bad at all for EF or PL lenses, most of which weigh two to two and a half kilos for the ones advertised as lightweight options. We did some quick tests during our time with the lenses on our Red Ranger Helium in 8K. And overall, considering the price, we're quite impressed. First up are some breathing tests. The 20 to 55 at both 20 and 55 millimeters has breathing well under control. There is some there, but it's minimal. The 50 to 125 performs pretty much the same, but there is slightly more breathing than on the 20 to 55 but it's under control of both 50 and 125 millimeters, as you can see here. Next up are our flaring tests. At 20 millimeters on the 20 to 55, we aren't seeing much coloration in the flare. There are subtle green and yellow tones going on, but mostly the flares are pretty neutral in color. Once we go to 55 millimeters, the flares around the extreme edges disappear and the main flare is giving a more pronounced dip in contrast across the whole image. Moving over to the 50 to 125 of 50 millimeters, there seems to be a nice amount of blooming around the light source, which I quite like, and the coloration does seem to be much warmer than on the 20 to 55. At 125 millimeters, the flaring does seem to result in less of a dip in contrast than we saw on the wider lenses tele end, and the blooming around the light source does seem to be softer now. Both lenses are par focal, as you can see here. Just remember that if you do change that lens mount, then you may well need to add shims to the lens in order to compensate for that. In terms of sharpness, at 20 millimeters, the 20 to 55 seems very sharp, even at T2.8. 
However, at 55, there is a drop off in sharpness at T2.8. And once you stop down to T4, the sharpness does improve, but you really got to stop down to T5.6 in order to get the same sharpness levels that are comparable to around T2.8 at 20 millimeters. So it's a lens that is definitely much sharper on the wider lens than on the tele lens. Moving over to the 50 to 125, at its wider end again, the lens seems sharp even when wide open at T2.8. And when we move over to 125 millimeters, there is a slight drop off in sharpness, but it's not as apparent as you can see on the 20 to 55. Once you stop down to T4, the image sharpens up quite nicely. Overall, the image from these lenses seems to have quite a bit more character than we've seen from alternatives like the Sigmas, the Fujis, or the Laowa Oom lens. These Pictot lenses have more distortion, especially in out of focus areas. There's almost a slightly anamorphic quality to the distortion, which in most situations I really like, but it might not be to everyone's tastes, especially if you prefer a cleaner look to a lens. So if you're looking for some well-performing, lightweight cinema zoom lenses with a bit of character going on, these are going to be fantastic value for money. They match nicely as a pair and their focal lengths are very complementary. With these two lenses, you'll have just about all of the focal lengths that you're going to need on an average shoot. Their size means they don't require lens support and extra rigging if you'd rather keep your camera as small and lightweight as possible and they're going to be a perfect pair for the new generation of affordable small cinema cameras, the Red Komodo, Black Magic cameras, even the pocket ones, and the Kinefinity Mavo, you know, cameras like that. So if you're interested in these lenses, head over to proev.co.uk and make sure you let us know what you think of the Pictor zooms down in the comment section down below. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.